Ramadan Mubarak and welcome to Ramadan Reminders. I'm Yusuf Estes and today I want to talk about the 11th Juz of the Quran. I don't want to confuse that now with the 9th chapter, which is what I'm going to be reading from, but it's the 11th out of 30 parts of the Quran and in the Tarawih, this is what the Imam will be reading tonight, the 11th Juz or the 11th part of the Quran because it's the 11th night of Ramadan. This is the surah. It starts with, we're going to be talking about Surah Al-Tawbah. And this is the chapter or surah of the Quran which has no Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. There's been a lot of postulation about why that has not, uh, does not have that attributed to it. One of the things that the scholars have talked about is the fact that the people that are mentioned here right away in the beginning of it are those people who make treaties and agreements and and basically act like they're with you all the way, but then in reality they're not. And so they're not really do any of Allah's rahmah or his rahim. And this is, uh, you know, part of the Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, particularly and especially merciful. To who? And of course to the believers. And because he's not talking about believers in the beginning, you can see why. Because as it starts out, it's talking about that uh, this is a declaration of disassociation, cutting off of Allah and his messenger to those with whom they had made a treaty amongst the idolaters. And so that's how it begins. You can go read it for yourself, chapter 9 from the beginning. But I want to go up now to what's relative to our program today. When Allah is talking about the hypocrisy, so much so, and I'm going to go to verse 107. And Allah is asking here, chapter 9, verse 107, are those hypocrites that took for themselves to build a place to worship, a mosque, for causing harm and disbelief, huh? and division amongst the believers as a place that whoever warred against Allah and his messenger. Yeah. So what he's talking about now are people who have built a mosque Pretended to be Muslims, but in fact they're using it as a place to conspire and work together to destroy Islam from the inside. They're liars and they're cheaters and they're lying and making treaties of agreements which they know in their heart they never were going to keep to start with. Law keeps talking about this in the next verse as well. And they say, by the way, that... Uh, they only did this because they intended the very best. But Allah testifies they're liars. Now let's go to verse 108. Allah says, don't even stand inside of a place like this. Don't even stand there for your prayers. That a mosque that's founded on righteousness from the first day is much more worthy for you to stand in. And in it are men who, who love to purify themselves and Allah loves those who purify themselves. It gives us a lot of lessons today. But one of those things we want to talk about is being clean in front of Allah and purifying ourselves. On the outside, we make wudu, we make ghusl, we wash ourselves, we wash our hands, our mouths, our faces, our heads, our arms and our legs. All of these things are a part of washing up. And this is good, and it has to be done before we can do our prayers. But there's something even more important than that, and that's to begin by cleaning the heart. Because you can't make pure intentions with an impure heart, can you? The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, told he, us about the mufta. What is mufta? In the English language, it means a key. And he said the mufta to the salah, the mufta to the salah, the key to this ritualistic worship, is the wubu. The wubu means when we wash and clean ourselves for this kind of purification, to make ourselves tuhur. But then he said that the mufta to the wudu the key to this purification is what? And he said it's the niya, the intention. So before I even pray, I need to purify my body. But before I do that, I need to purify the heart. And this is key to all of us. It's just something important. 
if you're not a Muslim yet and you're thinking about Islam, or if you're a new Muslim, or somebody really waking up to the religion you were born into, begin always by looking into your own heart. Is what you're doing really for the sake of Allah? Are you really having a clean heart about what you're doing? Or is there some other agenda going on? And we find that all too often today that there are a lot of other agendas happening around us and we kind of fall into these traps. We have to remember though that the shaitan, the devil, is going to be trying to lead us away, especially in our worship. Now listen again. It's not that he's just going to take some people to hell by making them drink or do alcohol or sex or so and so. But he'll also try to come to you through the religion and encourage you to do something that's extremely this way, that way, corrupting the way of Islam, or even turning against Muslims. And this is a very dangerous thing to do because when you find your heart having hatred in it, when you find anger in your heart, this is not pure. It's not clean. And in order to clean our hearts and purify ourselves, we must always start there. One of the things that's important too is never to divide up. Don't divide up into groups. Don't attack each other and say things that are harmful things toward each other. Even if you feel like, well, those guys are wrong and we're right. What is the benefit behind this kind of thinking? It's important for you to try to learn and to follow the best of Islam that you can. But at the same time, it's critical that we not judge each other and say, oh, you know, you're wrong and your sheikh is wrong or your book is wrong and your teaching is wrong. Only we are right. Because what if you change your mind tomorrow and you found something better? And Islam teaches us when we find better, we move to that. We go to the thing which is better than what we have. So tomorrow you would be saying to those same people, maybe they came to what you had today and you're going, no, now you're wrong again because I found something better today. The best thing for us to do is concern ourselves about our own business, straighten ourselves out, purify our own hearts, and so then we'll be able to do what? Have good niyyah. In the amal of niyyah. This is a beautiful teaching in Islam. It comes to us by way of Omar, radiallahu anhu. And he said that he heard from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, these words. That for sure every action is going to be judged according to what? The saying of it? The tongue? No. According to the thinking about it? No. According to what? According to the intention. The attention in the heart. What was it you wanted? What was it you were looking for? And again, think what he's saying. Every action is going to be judged according to the intention behind it. And whoever made a hijra or relocated themselves for the sake of Allah and his messenger, they'll have the reward of that. But whoever relocated themselves for a woman or any material thing, then they'll have the reward of that. So let us focus on this and this important subject of our intention, keeping our intention pure for Allah alone. Oh, and by the way, don't forget about the RamadanReminders.com, our website, RamadanReminders.com. Till tomorrow, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah. The pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan.